My country, South Africa, is in the grip of a rape crisis. We'd actually rape your girlfriend with you watching us. They rape like there's no tomorrow. Why? Sexual predators stalk streets and alleyways with impunity, deliberately spreading killer diseases. I'm HIV, so I want to spread that HIV. My community is taking the law into their own hands, killing the rapists among them. And there's another one lying just across here. In many areas, the cops are losing control. Children are growing up in a world where rape and mob justice is seen as normal. They become desensitized. To them, it becomes it's normal. has some of the highest levels of rape in South Africa. My name is Gordon Tika. I'm a freelance journalist. I've covered crime stories here in Deep Suit for the last 13 years. This is one of the most dangerous places in, in, in Johannesburg. If you are found to be walking at night, you risk your life 100%. And rape is something which is very common. And it can often end in murder too. I've had a tip off. The body of yet another dead woman has been discovered, dumped here on the banks of a deep sloot river. Someone would, would kill after rape just because they want to hide their identity. We may never know whether this poor soul was raped before being killed, but everything I know about Deep Sloot tells me she was. People get killed here almost like every week. Yeah, you every see? week. Yeah. Every week. Some other people they just get disappeared without knowing where they end up to. People kill them and throw them in extremely. The yeah. He has left the children behind. They're crying, they don't know where the mother is. And this thinking what all the sewage that comes from deep sloot. So bad, so sad indeed. Almost a third of men in this township admit to having used force or threats to obtain sex. I want to know why deep sloot has become so dangerous for women, and not just because of my job. I live here with my wife and kids. Years on the deep sloot crime beat gives me access to some very dangerous men. Men who have no fear of the law and will talk freely and on camera about raping women. Can you explain how you would target a person? Our targets are like people who like stay alone in most places, like ladies who stay alone. Have you ever tried to get into someone's shack and rape a woman in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've done it. We've done it a couple of times. What you use to pick in? We have every tool. We, we have this thing, a crowbar. Yeah, we use that to open doors mostly. As soon as the door is open, she's gonna scream, obviously. As we walk in, we tell her to shut up. We pull out our knives, and then we're gonna start with her, put her in her own bed and rape her. I cannot begin to imagine the terror of the victims. What would the woman say to you when you're about to rape her? You answer this one. Mm -hmm. Like, I've come across women who mostly offer cash. Like, I give her cash to stop. So she would be offering you money, and then well, what happens? Well, do that and take the cash as well. You yeah. take the money and still rape her? You still rape yeah. her. Yeah. 
Sometimes we'd, we'd actually rape your girlfriend with you watching us. Uh, if he doesn't yeah, cooperate, we're gonna have no choice but to stab him. Yeah. What, what is the most number of people that we've been involved in in a gang rape? It was four. I think it was four. It was the four of us. You just took turns on that person? Yeah, we yeah. just took turns. One after another. We made her run naked, you know, things like that. The crazy things, actually. We were tossing bricks and things at her while she was running, you know, things like that. Sometimes making fun of her, the fact that she's actually scared and terrified. Have you ever thought how bad it is for the person that we have raped? No, actually, it never comes to mind to me sometimes. Well, mostly, it never comes to mind. I can't understand that. Where is your conscience then? No conscience at all. No conscience. I cannot believe these men are not in jail, that they are allowed to roam freely around my community. Those people that are heartless, evil human beings, and such type of people that are not needed to live amongst us. They don't deserve to be with the residents of this community. Tipsluth's notorious extension one is the township's most dangerous area. It's also where most rapes occur. There is no electricity here, and when the night falls, the area's lack of lighting provides the perfect cover for rapists. Imagine you walk a distance from where you live, trying to find a toilet in the midnight, in the darkness. So how dangerous is it at night to leave your shack? It's dangerous. The criminal, you attack me, mm. like you rape me or you kill me. What time of the night do you have to, to lock yourself in your home? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yes. You're already inside. Yes. Goodbye. Be safe. Hmm? Okay. Sure. Yes. There's nothing that these people can do living here in this darkness. It's not only women who are at risk in Extension One. I, I do feel nervous in this time of the night. There are a lot of guys who stay there and they are not good guys, especially at night, so let's go. Kane is bitter, very bitter. In the sweet blood of life, in the sweet blood of life, in the sweet blood of life. Deepsloot feels like a different place by day, but an air of menace hangs over my township. It doesn't take me long to find a victim of rape. Just down the road from my home, this woman was recently subjected to a horrific nighttime attack. The rapist smashed his way into her corrugated shack. Chumiaka as a mouse screamer, our Udor Tunta, and the Risholor naturalist to our sister Hopela or not Hobola, King Yago Norvana Luen, Garabutik and Alawano Munyan, and three years and Vele, I feel shame in her. And then at a go petong waka. And after I went to Bullet Gobo, Gaza must scream my arses below two because of Kitobolai. Kashiki Shilong and Agagom petong, and Akanaro bed the veil. And then from there, Katrubula and Sarisam bed, and then at her mongre. Her ordeal lasted an hour and a half. Ah, Fedamo. Ah, to a mutsa, a good arbut, a lescavalat, 
between 2013 and 2016, 500 rapes were reported in Deep Sloot. Only one led to a conviction. Lina, the willing got in, who say I'm allowed Mama to home. I give a look in Alice on the civet, so Nikitat, I'm allowed Mama to Anaka Kosovo. I'm getting to Molly Morik Molai. But they seem wary of treating the suspect in case they trigger a riot. And that suits them not justified. When they seem breathing like that, it, it, it doesn't make them feel happy. In fact, they think of finishing him off. It's time for the cops to try and move the suspects to safety. As the cops negotiate with the crowd, the suspects fight for their lives. It is difficult watching your fellow human being suffering right in front of you. I want to try and help him, but I'm scared. 
I will to intervene, the mob will turn on me. It could cost me my life. God help, deep slit. The suspects are carried through the mob, escorted by armed cops. All three would later die. These barbaric mob justice killings are happening here on a regular basis. What I have seen today has really shaken me. But children have witnessed it all as well. They, they have probably seen it from the beginning to the end. And uh, that, you know, is killing our kids because scenes like this, they make kids think that it, it is normal. It is normal to kill a person. You see, they become desensitized. Even if they see a dead body on the street, to them it becomes it's normal. They can even play soccer around the dead body. It breaks my heart that children have to witness such awful scenes. What hope is there for the future when such terrible acts become a part of our everyday life? What you see here, the dancing, they call it after tears. They're busy celebrating that they know the three suspects are dead. Now at least they'll be free in the society. They'll be able to walk around freely. People feel abandoned in deep sleep. But surely mob justice is not the answer. I went to meet some of those at the forefront of vigilante action who do not flinch at burning rapists alive. And they are proud of it. Hello, ladies. What happens when you come across someone who has raped in the area? Yeah, we burn the people. Yes, we burn the people. The thing is, we are trying to show other people that rape. Yes. So that when you rape somebody, you'll see what we did to that guy. Next time when you think of raping, you'll never do it. You'll know that the mob case will kill you or will ban you. When we ban a person, we start to hit first. So that a person can die hurt. We start hit. Before we put a petrol on also the tie, we use tie and petrol. Then after we use a matches or gun, like the person must get banged. And we make sure that person, when bends, don't have to run. Some other times when we are busy beating that guy, putting a petrol, the police come and will shoot us with rubber bullets. And obvious, we won't wait for a rubber bullet, you will run. So no, we run for our life. And how many mob justices have you ever participated in? Many, many, because I try to help community. I have kids. I'll feel the pain. One day will be my daughter out there. One day will be somebody that I care about out there. If I do not help, who will help me? But when the mob plays judge and jury, mistakes are inevitable. And the consequences are horrific. Have you had uh, a suspect who is innocent and has been killed? Sometimes we, have, we catch the wrong person. If we get a wrong person, it's probably we didn't do research or investigate properly. But if we find a wrong person, <coughs> community must make donation to, to, to arrange the funeral, to arrange each and everything, because it's our fault for the family to lose the person. People are fed up of crime, and that pushes them to the age that taking the law into their own hands is something wrong. Even the threats of being burned alive seems to have done nothing to stop rapes in deep sleep. And with so many attacks, most residents either know a victim or a rapist. And I'm no different. I know someone who has raped before. His name is David. 
I first heard about David being involved in these uh, crimes of rape, it's about uh, seven years ago. Uh, his father and me, we used to be very close. When David's father died, I felt I had to look out for his son. I even saved David from vigilantes after he raped somebody. I've been trying to track David down. Talking to him might really help me to get inside the mind of a rapist, to understand why on earth a man can rape a woman. His ex-girlfriend might be able to help, but she's just dropped a bombshell. After walking her home one night, David attacked her. I opened my door and then I said bye-bye, thank you for taking me home. And then he said, no, let me get inside. I said to him, no, it's over between me and you. And then he started to push me, pushing, pushing me, trying to force me. I said, no, I don't want. I tried to close my door. And then he took me, he, he picked me up and threw me to the bed inside my, my shelter. He forced me after that. He, he just hey, just take a breath. Just take a breath. You understand. I am very affected, bad. I find that uh, I'm HIV. I feel so bad and crying. I get this HIV AIDS after this happened. So I'm very sorry about that. He will get his punishment from God. God will punish you? Yeah, God will punish him, but I'm still alive. God will help me. I can't believe that David has raped again, even after I saved him from mob justice. I thought perhaps through that, he might have uh, learned a very, very hard lesson. If it would happen now, they say there he is, they've caught him again, they're busy with him. I don't think I would waste my time, take my phone, spend my air time on trying to call uh, the relevant authorities. And I uh, hope he's not continuing doing this rape thing because he'll be infecting a lot of people with the disease. I need to speak to David urgently. The next day, I receive a call from David. He's heard that I was looking for him, and he's agreed to meet me. I met a young woman who told me that uh, she's your former girlfriend, and uh, you raped her. She told me that you threatened her with a knife. Yeah, I raped her. What was going on in your mind at the time when you were doing this? You give me the sex then I will be satisfied. If you don't, I will make a plan to kill you. Do you get to realize that that woman, she's now HIV positive? Yes. How do you feel that you gave her HIV? I feel okay. How yeah. many means have you taken them by force and slept with them? Maybe 21, 24. 21, 24? Yes. After all these 24 of them that you have mentioned, that you raped them, did you use protection? No, I didn't use their protection. Do you think you have infected them with HIV? They know I'm HIV, so I want to spread that HIV. Do you feel good within yourself that you, know, you are spreading it to other people? I feel good because I can't die alone. That's why you're spreading, and it makes you feel good. Yes. Yes. Hey, it's scary, man. You make me feel very, very scared. I can't stay three days without sex. Why not? Uh, I'm powerful. You're powerful? Yeah, I'm powerful. Powerful guy. 
Even like now, when you talk like, we're talking like now, I feel human like now. Can't you control your feelings? When I feel you, you have calves, you have you nice, like the way I want, I will make a plan to get you. That's horrible, man. That's very horrible. That's very horrible. Do you agree with me when I, if I say you are a dangerous man in our society? They're scaring me. They know um, can I take action any time. What would my old friend, David's father, think of what his son has become? I used to know your father very well. So when I thought of you, that you're being attacked by mob justice, I went all out to make sure that you, at least I saved your life. And I did it out of love. You know, I thought that perhaps I saving you, it was going to be a lesson. You're not afraid of mob justice. No, like no. You don't care about that. People banning you, putting petrol on you. You don't care, that kind of punishment. I pray my God, that's why I survive. You pray to God, and then tomorrow you wake up, you rape a woman, yeah, but, and God saves you from your wrongdoing. Yeah, but God is loves everyone. As long as you pray for God, then God will save you always. I could never, ever have foreseen this man I knew as a child becoming a serial rapist who spreads deadly disease. I never want to see David again. But before I go, I want to ask one last question. In your lifetime as you were growing up, have you been sexually abused as a young boy? Did someone else abuse you sexually? Yes, Mr. Golden. That time I was arrested, it was 90-something, 93, 94. So you were sexually abused? Yeah. In the police custody? Yes, in the cell. You were sodomized? Yes. I was around of 14 to 15 years that time. The police, they starting to treat me like a wife, then they sex with me. So you learned it from there, then you took it with you? Yes. You started doing it outside? Yes. When you were sexually abused, how did you feel? I was feeling bad always. Or why this, those people do this thing to me? Do you think it does make sexual victims feel the same when you rape them? Do you think they feel the same like you? Yeah, they feel bad, but in my heart, I don't think about it. Uh, this was very shocking, and at the same time, very heartbreaking. I think David should have been in prison for all those uh, crimes he had committed, 24 women in number. There is an abnormally high rate of rape taking place in Deep Sloot. And when they, they rape, they rape like there's no tomorrow. Nono Maseko is the only professional counselor in Deep Sloot dealing with the trauma of thousands of female rape victims. When a person is raped, they lose their self in the rape. They struggle to think properly. They struggle to sleep. They struggle to eat. And then some will bath like minute after minute, feeling or thinking that they're dirty. It isn't just women she deals with. There is men and boys too. Some guys get raped also. Uh, or get molested at an early age. And Nunu is all too aware where male rape can lead. So when you grew up, you grew up with that anger that I was, I was a woman for a certain period of time. So why can't I also hate women? And by raping and raping and raping, that person is trying to shut down the pain that he is feeling, you know? And by doing that, he's not helping himself because by raping, yes, you might get a satisfaction for that day, but raping 20, it means you not be able to shut your own pain. So that person also needs help. Where will that help come from in Deep Sloot? Who could help a rapist like David? Who would want to help? My township is sick and it feels terminal. I have seen and heard things during the making of this film that even I, a crime reporter, 
who has lived half his life in deep sleep cannot believe. But it gets worse. There are people amongst us who are raping young children. This sister's daughter suffered a horrific attack. A shopkeeper, she wants to remain anonymous to protect her identity. So what will happen in the night? I said I'm a customer. I'm being in a little bit of a discard. So this one, I'm trying to scream. Oh boy, I'm screaming. I'm trying to. But I'm not going to be a customer. 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 But I'm not going to be um, how old was he? How many years ago? Well, ten. Um, to Ana, but the bam chega is bad. Le le, no, um, kusha HIV kanja. Eh, see le eh eh po clinic. Bafuga bam chega um kusha no HIV bam chega le pregnancy, and then bam chega the treatment of clean. Inganiako since you go in Zega Lento is so in pillow in Jan for you and Jay, I'm affected in Gagana Lento. In pillow get my dear beggar, I could no man imagine pillowak. I'm going to look before we pride. But you go manje, I'm a so good right, I'm a so good pride. I'm Billy can a canceling. But I'm born to canceling, it could be room season. I can't just get to understand why people rape such small kids who are very innocent. I can't even begin to imagine the kind of pain that sister must be feeling right now. The thought of somebody hating my children is just unthinkable. I'm starting to realize as I dig further that my own children are in serious danger. Right now, I managed to get a man who lives in this community of Deep Sloot, who does these things, and he has agreed to talk to me. He must remain anonymous to protect the identity of the victim. I feel like I'm getting pulled deeper and deeper into this dark world. So you are saying you raped a, a girl? As a family member of me. How old was the child at the time when it happened? Five, five, five. That's five years. Yeah. I'm going to run China engine, man. But even China engine, no, I'm still under the knife. I'm not going to kill any of our VCs. It's got to one of us over my kid one. But I was on father, but of no one child. And oh, and I'm going to feel a bit high. I don't think I'm busy. How on earth could a man rape a five-year-old girl? I'm about to find out his reason. Why, why exactly did you do that? Sangoma told me when I tweet, I'll be better than. A Sangoma is a Zul term for a traditional healer. He, he told you that when you do it, you'll be better. Yeah. What problem do you have? HIV. Oh, you are HIV positive. Yeah. So the Sangoma told you that if you rape a small child, you will get healed yeah. from HIV. Yeah. Since you are HIV positive, what do you think about the child that you, 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 you raped? Me, I don't know. Is it already right or you have HIV? If you have HIV, you have HIV. 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 Are you healed right now? I am not healed. Guilty when I pack up to go to the village. So, like, why was it? Yes, so, like, you know, 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 you Answer yes. 
He's not human enough. Perhaps he was supposed to be something else, not a, not a living human being. Maybe an animal staying in the zoo. It would have been better for him to live there with other animals. He did a very wrong thing. He has ruined the life of that small girl. The Sangomas in this community of Deep Slut, there are a lot. They come from different countries of, in Africa. They're here in Deep Slut to make money. It's very shocking to hear that we have such people in our community who still advise other people that no go and rape in order to get, to get well. The Sangoma who advised this young man to rape a young child has disappeared. However, it's easy to find flyers advertising the services of other Sangomas in Deep Slut. Many people here still believe in the powers of traditional healers. Bringing back lost labor, stop smoking and drinking, and uh, the last one, the HIV AIDS people can be helped. I've heard about it before, but the rumor, they never took it very seriously. I've discovered another Sangoma in Extension One who's offering HIV miracle cures for cash. Does he advise raping young children? If you saw, will he talk on camera? so a family member? Yeah. Bo, bo msala, like, we, we. Like the cousins yeah. within the family, yeah. those are the people when yeah. you're HIV yeah. positive, you yeah. can target. Yeah. The Sangoma is adamant having sex with a child cures HIV. But I think he's starting to realize he might be incriminating himself. Abanye Vela, we have an advisor Vela, Guti. Yeah. 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 To me, he showed that no, he was afraid of the Lord. That's why he was contradicting himself. Not far away from my house, there's a man who tells people in deep sleep that they must go and rape a child. This is the way in which he helps people that are HIV positive. He tells them to go and rape kids. Totally wrong. This is utter nonsense. There's no truth to it. He just wants to enrich himself. I've got to warn my community about the threat their children are facing from some Sangomas. I'm going straight to my church. And raising my kids here, it worries me a lot. Uh, because I, I'm always of the opinion that if they rape my neighbor's kid, what about me? It might as well happen to me, someone raping my child. We've got people that are misleading this community. The Sangomas, which are outside there, 
who are busy telling people who are HIV positive that if you sleep with a girl aged 13 years, you'll get healed. Let's pray and ask God that he can give us wisdom and give us the power that the evil spirit that does exist in our community can go away so that we can live in peace. Thank you, Spirit. Hallelujah. There is no law or justice in deep suit, and no sign of it ever arriving. Women and children are being raped and will continue to be raped. People are being bent to death on our streets and more justice groups. A new generation of kids are growing up traumatized. The vicious cycle of violence and rape seems to have no end. All the residents of this township have left with their faith. All we can do is offer our prayers to heaven to deal with this hell. Yeah, making this film has totally changed in my opinion of living in deep sleep. I feel like I'm not safe here living here with my kids. I first came to Deep Sleep more than 17 years ago. I married my wife here. My children grew up here. Much as I love this place and its people, my family cannot stay here. I'll say it again. God help Deep Sleep.